somebody knows the truth and they're just not telling me I need to figure it out and I need to be scared and just everybody knows everything is except for me and that's totally not true. All right, so today I want to talk to you about starting my first company. It was about 10 years ago, I was living in Israel and the first company was named Douchebag Media LTD. That about summarizes my approach to business. I never wanted to take it seriously and I never wanted to take myself seriously. Basically, I came to a conclusion about 10 years ago that I have a problem. I'm a marketing manager, but I'm stuck offline. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know really what to do. I do feel like I got a connection to this kind of business, to selling, to advertising, to making the campaigns. I was doing billboards. I was doing stuff like newspapers. I was actually doing car stuff and other things that I found interesting. But I did realize that my salary has a glass ceiling that I really can't break through. And well, I'm not going anywhere. I always had fears about what will happen in five years. What will happen in 10 years? Where will I find myself in 20? So that moment really brought me to the conclusion I need to do a change. A lot of changes is happening in my life and I always wanted stuff to change. So I went to the, the mall basically and bought myself my first laptop. I was starting to type like this with one finger, then two fingers and moving myself up, but only because I knew if I get stuck offline, I'm gonna lose my life to it. That was like the biggest fear I had. So I really, I, I really knew I needed to move forward. It's not something special and I'm sure a lot of people can do it, but I think that my story might help you find your way and find your start. Now, I didn't make millions like everybody online. Well, maybe I met a few, but it's not relevant at that point because in that point, the only thing I had was fear. Buying my first laptop, realizing that I'm, I need to change, realizing that I need to go online and really find myself. I had no idea what online meant 10 years ago I had no idea what are the jobs that are available I just knew I need to do something so I won't regret it in 10 20 years I don't really want to find myself in the same place like I see a lot of people find themselves in the same place five years later just a different job name ten years later just with a different job name maybe a better description maybe you dress a little better but honestly you're not going anywhere so that brought me to looking online for answers and Google is a bitch sometimes because you gotta find like how do I make money online you get a million funnels that are scams and maybe some good ones I had no idea what I was looking so the search is really hard I want to talk to you about that when you start Starting to search yourself, you gotta, you gotta understand it's not gonna be an easy quest. It's not something that you can find in one day or two days. You might get lucky today because it's much easier, but also with that, it's much harder to find something in all of the noise online. You gotta understand what are your options and you gotta understand your strengths as well because using your strengths is what it's all about. You're not gonna change yourself and you're not gonna change anything. And Due to the fact that the internet is such a vast place and it's endless opportunities, it gives you the option to use your strengths. It doesn't mean that you got to change yourself and adapt to a different kind of work or maybe learn something per se, which is really important. You should do that every day and all day long. But it means that if you like writing, if you like drawing, if you like thinking, if you like to optimize stuff, every part of that is a job online, which is not the same way offline. When you go to look at, for a job offline, you're basically, you got your resume, you got what you study, you know, you got your experience and that's basically it. Online, you can invent yourself. You can be the pirate in the high seas or, and you can be anything you want. Because of the vast variety of options, we get lost sometimes. And it's important to know what are, what are the opportunities at hand? Well, first of all, it's hard to find a job. It's hard to find it offline. It's hard to find it online. But you got to understand there are more options online today for you. Basically, you got to know English. Or if you don't know English, second best, I guess it's Spanish. I'm not sure how Mandarin will assist you. Maybe after that, it's the Russian language or the Arabic languages. But those are the things you need to you need to know and be prepared for. After that, like I said, let's focus on our strengths. What do we like to do? What are the options for us that we can get started on right away? So I was a salesman. I always was a salesman. I never had an education. I didn't finish high school. It wasn't in the cards for me. And that salesman approach and that experience in working in the malls and like clothing shops. And after that, actually I spent 
a few good years as a business school in the Diamond Exchange in Israel, but I had to take that selling experience and convert it into a job online. And selling for me is marketing, marketing is PR, and all of the words that something somebody can use to describe something specific in a textbook kind of manner, I feel they're all really related. So you go online, you search for how to make money, and all you see is investings and forex and scams and bullshit like that, but you do see some courses and you do see some opportunities that other people might have and you think you can do the same way. You got sites like Fiverr, you got sites like, I don't know, anything that's related to find a job online or find a freelance or a professional. You can be that freelance or a professional, just know your strengths. For me again, it was marketing, it was selling. It was thinking of a way I can talk to somebody and say more things as a marketing manager should, but relying everything to the selling point. And that's basically how I became an affiliate. Of course, I was looking for a job for a while. It wasn't like in a day or in a week or so. I was talking to a lot of people and I was trying to find myself and all of those opportunities. My biggest problem was that the information wasn't as available. So every time I, I watch something like you can, you can find a job online or you can make money online, it was courses about something like SEO, about copywriting, about website management, about servers or about something that you can do that somebody's trying to sell you the course for. I always had a problem to listen to somebody, which I really don't recommend in this day and age because online you should listen to everybody. You got the biggest encyclopedia in the world, which is YouTube right now, and you can learn anything you want. I didn't use all of those options because I wasn't aware that I can use those tools like that. So I started looking and I started looking and I came across a job that was an affiliate manager. I had no idea what's an affiliate manager. I had no idea who's an affiliate, but I started to, to show some interest. I started to do the calls and I basically used all of my selling skills to get a job interview. And in the first job interview, I was trying to, you know, show I'm smart and show that I know something and move on and move on and move on to the next and the next and the next. Honestly, it was much easier than I was expecting, but maybe because I had much harder times before or I don't know what maybe I got lucky when I went to an interview like an affiliate manager my first question is what's that but the job description was a manager so talking nicely and explaining that you can be trustworthy and explaining that you are the person that they should hire that's the first part it's not even the experience with the affiliation itself I got explained a lot along the way I met a lot of people some were smart some were less and it made me realize that not everybody knows what they're doing online it's kind of made everything a bit easier in my mind for me because I was always thinking that somebody knows best. Somebody knows the truth and they're just not telling me I need to figure it out and I need to be scared and just everybody knows everything is except for me and that's totally not true. That's not true in life as well by the way. So coming to, uh, coming to find a job as an affiliate manager actually brought me to the world of affiliation and marketing online. After starting to talk to other affiliates, which 10 years ago was like casino affiliates and other SEO products, it, was, it wasn't the same options that we have today. Content looked differently than what it looks right now. No TikTok, no Instagram. Facebook was like, I think the biggest thing. I might not remember the exact dates, but everything looked a little bit different than it looks today. So going to that job and taking all of the skills that I had from my life as a salesman, from the diamond exchange year for flying to different countries using my Russian as a tool because it's a different culture and it gives me some tools using my Hebrew as a tool and being Israeli gives me a lot of options and a lot of cultural differences using the English that I know that allowed me to travel and see the world everything connected to a job for me and it should connect everything for you as well so Coming to a job like an affiliate manager, you got to talk to a bunch of affiliates in that specific field. Let's take YouTube for example right now. An affiliate manager in YouTube would find a ton of small YouTubers and would try to push their links, their offers to that YouTuber. So basically if I'm promoting for example vitamins or something nice like that or other clothings or, or merch, it doesn't really matter what, I'm going to find similar 
interested YouTube channels and try to talk to them about creating an opportunity. I'm not sure what YouTube offers today and how the deals look like because I'm not into that at the moment. I should be in the near future, but I'm still not there. We used to talk about what's the deal. So is it rev share, revenue share, like a part of the revenue goes to the affiliate and that's it. Is it a CPL deal? Like if somebody registers, he can use that lead and try to sell something. So every registration should pay something. Is it CPA, cost per action? If something is occurring, like a sale, for example, somebody presses the link, then goes to the product, buys something or registers to something like a course, and only after that, the affiliate gets a commission. So it's basically a deal. That's a regular deal. It's just like the market when you buy tomatoes. It's just like anything else in the world. It's just online. And everything brought me to more and more revelations that everything's for free everything's reachable and you can do anything you want in that part of you know that part of the world that part of the virtual world so my first company was douchebag maybe ltd like i said that's my approach i don't want to take anything seriously mostly because i think i have fears that if i take myself seriously and i won't be able to make it it's just i'm a failure and nobody wants that even this is scary honestly talking to a camera and starting to speak like i know something I, every fear that I have is gushing inside of me right now. But I think it's the most important thing I can do even for myself, explaining and talking and explaining to you my ideas, a different kind of view. Going back to the work itself, after finding people that I could talk to, finding those affiliates, I started to realize I can do more stuff. For example, if I was selling cell phones, I can now sell cars. If I'm selling diamonds, I can sell houses. And that's basically got me to grow as an affiliate. I started to find different jobs in the affiliation markets as a, as a hired person. But I always felt like an online pirate because all of the jobs were like, we got to do this, we got to do that. It felt it's not really organized as well as it should be. And every time I find myself in a different position, as again, as an affiliate manager, but opening up more options for myself and learning more things, which that process is amazing. And being open to failure and learning, obviously, it's a really important thing when you go to work, even if it's offline or online, whatever it should be. Now, after seeing who are the affiliates going to a few conferences and well it's just people like 10 years ago was email marketing basically spam wasn't as hard as it is today so people got lists did a, did a landing page about something asked other people to send emails to it registered for opt-ins opt-in is when a, a person leaves his name and email in your web page then you gather those opt-ins and next time your friend has an offer or does a launch of a product, you can send them the email marketing as well. Writing a subject line was interesting. That's the CTR. It's like a thumbnail in YouTube right now. Then writing the message itself so it's not spammy. You go through filters and you just have something to offer. We all saw that those emails like the Nigerian prince and scamming online. You gotta avoid that shit because it's not evergreen. You might make a few bucks from stealing, but you won't make a life out of it. And that's an important lesson as well online, just like anything else. So moving forward, I noticed those affiliates are not professional businessmen and conglomerates like I thought they should be. They were just guys working from home. They're using a laptop. They're smart guys. They're entrepreneurs, which is really important to be. But it's not something that's not reachable to a simple person like me. Every time I spoke to somebody like that, every time I went to a conference, every time I had a meeting with somebody that kind of, it kind of opened my eyes to realize that I can do that too. After, you know, getting some sense about everything, starting to do new conversations about let's do a deal like that. Maybe we should look forward to this thing or that thing. It opened up more and more options. And I realized that the internet is just the world I live in. I guess we all are cyborgs right now because we can't do anything without it, right? So what my feeling is for you and what you should do. Basically, I want to explain to you my path and I want to explain to you how me with all the fears and not knowing anything about anything started 10 years ago becoming an affiliate myself, started to ask questions. In the conference, the, the first conference I was in Barcelona, I actually remember it, I was asking people, so what do you do? I, I wasn't shy about it and I know a lot of people didn't want to answer because it's like a trade secret. But with that, a lot of people did want to answer. A lot of people wanted to talk and that salesman in me kind of 
kind of woke up. So what do you do guys? How do you do that? Do you need help with anything? Do you want to do it together? Could I do something that you're not willing to do? And just looking for myself and bringing that entrepreneurship kind of life into reality with those options. Talking more and more with people and surrounding myself more and more with affiliates it just showed me what they're doing it kind of opened everything up for me and made me realize i can do it as well so i started with email marketing as well after that we proceeded to understand like what's buying advertisement online it was contextual it was easier because it's google and stuff like that that was what's available 10 years ago you got websites you got seo so we need to find a copywriter to do the copy we need to find a designer to make it nicer we need to find like a front-end PHP guy or HTML whatever so the web pages look nice then I realized we can do offers we can do whatever we want I remember actually one time in a conference I was talking to a guy I had no idea who that was but actually was a big affiliate at the time and we talked about that AliExpress released like a really small drone and it was like five bucks apparently or ten bucks or something he made a landing page saying the smallest drone in the world just remarketed that thing and did drop shipping ten years ago from a product that cost him five bucks to I don't know fifty bucks and he sold tons of it and it just blew my mind like the options the simplicity of it and it made me realize I can do much more I want you to realize it as well you can do much more with your time you can do much more with the tools that you got in your possession already your life experience doesn't have to translate to just the things you're doing it can translate to anything new in the internet or in online marketing or affiliation for that matter you have a place for everybody it's not an easy job because you do have to be an entrepreneur nobody's gonna tell you what to do you gotta be hungry but with that hunger you do have opportunities and I want to explain everything in future videos I want to go into how I started the company who my first partner actually though and still one of my best friends to to till this day and I hope it's gonna continue and everybody I met along the way the mistakes I made and how I did the specific campaigns and how I made my money online so stick with me and I hope in the next videos you're gonna enjoy all the information you get subscribe by the way I really need those subscription guys